Okay, so our next speaker is Alex Kiss. He is a lifelong resident of Woonsocket, Rhode Island, and a full-time climate activist. He is the political chair of Climate Action RI and a member of Sunrise RI, and he also sits on the Rhode Island Green New Deal Research Council. This crowd uh, is it on target? This crowd is amazing. I've, I've been a climate activist for a little over a year, and I have to tell you, today kind of tops the charts. Um, as Jolie said, I'm Alex. Uh, I'm a full-time climate activist and a part of a bunch of really awesome organizations. A part of a bunch of really awesome organizations uh, fighting for a livable future for everyone. Now, let me tell you a little secret. I was a nerd in high school. Uh, <laughs> and in college, I studied the nerdiest possible field, engineering. Uh, and as a scientist and engineer, I'm a pretty firm believer in this wild idea that in any political discussion, the scientific truth needs to be laid out completely and honestly and kept in the forefront of everyone's mind. So here goes. If nothing in our society's approach to the climate crisis changes, we're screwed. On the course that humanity is currently on, all of us are living at the end of the world. That's not something I say lightly, but even the most conservative climate science we have, the IPCC report from last October, gives us like a decade to get our act together and drastically overhaul the energy economy if we want to avoid just the worst effects of climate change. Yes. And, yes. and conservative climate science doesn't exactly describe what will happen because we're reaching the point where global warming will begin to trigger a series of scary events. The loss of reflective sea ice, the release of methane trapped in the Arctic, the acidification of the ocean and many others. These events are positive feedback cycles caused by global warming and which will accelerate the rate of global warming. If nothing changes, the youth gathered here will live through nature's descent into the most chaotic, violent, unpredictable, destructive version of itself that our species has ever seen. If nothing changes, we the youth will suffer the decline in global food production, uh, the loss of coastal communities, an onslaught of violent and unpredictable weather events, pandemics of deadly disease, and worldwide resource wars. If nothing changes, we the youth will experience the rise of global authoritarian fascism, something we've already started to experience, uh, which will concentrate whatever resources are left and, and, uh, and wealth that still exists into a smaller number of greedy, blood-stained hands. If nothing changes, we the youth will quite possibly become climate refugees by the time we're the ripe old age of many of the people in this building behind me. I don't know about you, but this all makes me pretty mad. I think we are all scared for our future and our leader's embarrassing unwillingness to act seriously on climate change is pretty maddening. But you know what motivates me to continue this work? There's hope. As a scientist and engineer, I typically start with the assumption that every problem is solvable. The climate crisis is a big problem and it asks for a big solution, but it's solvable. It's gonna take swift action at the scale and on the timeline appropriate to the problem. It's going to take legislation, executive action, and court cases. It's gonna take a political revolution and a cultural revolution bigger and more wide reaching than we've ever seen before. And it's gonna take a Green New Deal, a massive investment, a massive investment in our future on every level of government. And you know what? We are going to win. Every single one of us, every young person in this crowd, everybody who has a stake in fighting for the future, and every activist from every generation willing to stand alongside us in this fight. It's going to be a heavy lift for sure. It's not going to be easy, but we can do it. We have proven already that we have the motivation and the energy and the ability to make the changes necessary to fight for our future. This strike is part of a worldwide movement. And by being out here today, by looking back on the victories we've already achieved and of the very short time that the climate crisis has been at the forefront of our political thought, and by working towards the victories that we will continue to achieve, we've proven that we can win. So let's get to work. Yeah!